Good morning, everyone in Brazil. Good evening there in Bangladesh. It's 8 p.m. Yeah. there. Good evening we must, from Bangladesh. We must start this thanking very much our friends from Bangladesh, Lamia Morshed and her team, particularly Tambir Islam, Shabir Ahmad, and Azira Mam, that for making this event possible. We are jointly broadcasting from UNO Social Business Brazil YouTube channel and UNO Century Facebook page. I am Luciano Gurgel, Investment Director of UNO Social Business Brazil, and along with my colleague Tulio Notin, Corporate Director of UNO Social Business Brazil, we are glad to welcome you all to the last panel of our No Going Back Talks. And for the grand finale, we have the privilege to have in your presence a visionary who is the father of both social business and microcredit, the founder of Grameen Bank and of more than 50 companies in Bangladesh. In 2006, Professor Mohamed Yunus and Grameen Bank were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He is the recipient of honorary degrees from universities across 24 countries. He has received awards from 33 countries, including state honors from 10 countries. He is one of only seven individuals to have received the Nobel Peace Prize, the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the United States Congressional Gold Medal. For his constant innovation and enterprise, the Fortune magazine named Professor Yunus in 2012 as one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time. So a very good morning from Brazil and good evening there, Professor Yunus. It is a great honor to have you here with us from YSB Brazil and more than 2,000 people eager to hear from you. Good morning, Professor Yunus. Uh, good evening. Delighted to be with you and all the people uh, on the call. So we'll have time to exchange our views, what's happening and uh, what is uh, important at this moment. Thank you, Professor Yunus. So uh, for those who don't know, Professor Yunus is also co-founder, along with Saskia Brustein, our global CEO of Yunus Social Business a company with its headquarters in Germany and operations in India, Kenya, Uganda, Colombia, and Brazil, with the mission of fostering the concept of social business. In Brazil, we are glad to say that after a long journey, our two fronts of action have reached important achievements. Our UNO Social Business Investment Fund was put together with the invaluable support of Marina Prokhnor and her Matus Filho Advogados Law Firm team. We successfully gathered investors, entrepreneurs, and mentors, and have already invested in seven social businesses from sectors such as education, waste management, reforestation, professional skilling, and houses reforms. 50% of the fund have already been deployed, impacting more than 1 million people in Brazil. On the other front, our corporate advisory team has advised more than 30 companies helping them to use the power of their organizations to promote social impact and understand the social value of their brands and products. In your presence, Professor Yunus, we would like to appreciate them all very much for the support provided to Yunus Social Business Brazil so far. So in this context, our No Going Back talks were a cycle of panels inspired by your No Going Back article published last week in Brazil in which we have talked with investors, entrepreneurs, mentors, and corporate executives around the mistakes that, we, that were made so far and how to avoid them look forward. Last time we spoke, Professor Yunus, we were discussing the Amazon forest crisis when you told us about the fruitful meeting you had with Marina Silva in September back last, uh, last year. And we left that meeting full of ideas about how social business could help to tackle some of the issues related to the Amazon forest. Sadly, we know that deforestation is not in quarantine. This, as many other projects, has been put in the side road. A lot has happened since then, and the circumstances have changed a lot. We and our audience are eager to hear your thoughts about this challenging time, Professor Yunus. Can you please share your takes on that? Thank you very much, Professor Yunus, again, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luciano, for inviting me to this talk. And you mentioned about the uh, forest fire in Amazonia and the tremendous efforts uh, we put together to come up with some ideas how to address this issue and make uh, take a small region of uh, Amazonia and transform it completely, newly making it a 3-0 area with zero poverty and zero 
uh, net carbon emission and zero unemployment and as in a true source of businesses. So that uh, dream uh, still remains. Uh, uh, the Corona crisis, Corona catastrophe has pushed us away from those uh, dreams for a while. But you just mentioned that uh, while we are busy fighting Corona, uh, the, the pro problems of uh, forest fire in Amazonia still continues, the same reason, same people, uh, same direction. That's very unfortunate. And uh, hopefully uh, the coronavirus uh, situation will give us a new chance to rethink the whole thing and make it, make it an integral part of all our programs, uh, not just Amazonia, but the whole world is uh, now uh, in a way part of that Amazonia the crisis that we were uh, brewing before the crisis uh, pandemic began. So this is the context that uh, today we all meet and we are trying to put all our social businesses in Bangladesh in uh, emergency gear, in disaster fighting gear. Uh, we were not prepared for uh, a disaster like uh, Corona crisis but suddenly we realized that uh, this is on us and we must fight it. And we did everything possible and we're still doing everything possible to help people to overcome, help people to protect themselves and so on. In the process, we raised a lot of questions, a lot of issues. Uh, one issue that I tried to focus, I tried to explain to people that the uh, whole world was caught unaware about a situation like Corona can take place, but it did take place and it's global overnight. It didn't take much time. Everything began in January. By uh, May now, it's global. It's, uh, it's covered all the countries of the world. So how fast it can go, this is uh, one example. And the whole world, all the population of the world is pushed inside their homes uh, by quarantine, by social distancing, by lockdown, whatever name you have. And the shops are empty, roads are empty, transportations are empty, planes are not flying up anywhere in the world. It's an amazing situation and it's a lightning speed. But the fact that uh, we came uh, all the way around in the history to bring people together, have a sense of globalization and sense of multilateralism. When the real thing hit us, the coronavirus, suddenly we found that those uh, globalization disappeared uh, in one aspect, an aspect of fighting the corona crisis. And also uh, the multilateralism, the combining all the forces of the world together to fight a common enemy to a common organization. That also disappeared. And we looked around and we saw uh, the emergence of tribalism. Each country is trying to protect itself in its own way, right way, wrong way, mixed way. Uh, they are not worried about their neighbors. They are not worried about the distant country and so on. Some even uh, became very aggressive, uh, hurting other people and to take advantage of other people, uh, prioritizing their own people, uh, which is very unfortunate. Uh, this was not the time to uh, do that. This is a time to help each other and uh, overcome it together, sharing it together. Uh, so this is one point that I emphasize that this is the wrong path that the world has shown along this quick uh, month that we had. And at the same time, we see one organization uh, which the world has put together to uh, be the leader in this fight, the WHO. And they were doing a good job. Uh, you may have complained about something, uh, but at the moment we're, we're in the fight, uh, this is not the time to complain and quarrel about it and put in, uh, in action investigations against it 
and uh, withdraw the funding uh, to the organization, making it weak, making it look confused. And it's wondering whether uh, the world, uh, the member countries are behind it. So this is a weakening of the whatever little multilateralism we have through the WHO. So this is a very bad sign. So we have to overcome this quickly that we don't go back to that. And instead of going uh, overcoming that, we saw more signs when it comes to uh, the vaccines, vaccine, uh, corona vaccine. Everybody is worried uh, we cannot get out of it. Corona permanently until we have a robust vaccine in our hand and we know that that vaccine works and Corona, we can say goodbye. And many, many companies were trying to uh, come up with, many laboratories were involved in it, many universities are involved in it, and they were promising that it will be um, uh, shorten the period and make it 18 months or less to bring that Corona uh, vaccine available to people. Then we see big companies are jumping around to make a tremendous amount of profit out of uh, the vaccine. Again, this is an absolutely wrong path. Uh, corona vaccine is not uh, an occasion to uh, make big money for big company. You see extra windfall gains, profits for big companies. That's the direction we are going. We were appealing to the world that corona vaccine should be made a public, common public good, common good for the whole world. Uh, it's not to be, not to belong to one country or one institution. So that idea of common good has to be brought up, brought back right now because, because before the vaccine is designed, before the vaccine is ready for use. So that's uh, still missing. And we see big controversy coming up already with the Sanofi. A French uh, pharma company, one of the largest pharma company in the world. Uh, they just announced that they are, when they bring out, they are in the way to bring out Corona vaccine a few months later. But once they do, their first delivery will be made to uh, United States because they put money to make that happen. So that irritated the, the people of France, people of the uh, whole world. They irritated the government of France. The government of France also poured in lots of money to Sanofi and the research organizations which supported it to develop that vaccine. So the whole idea that vaccines could belong to a particular country depriving other countries is uh, totally unacceptable. That uh, we do not want to carry on that one. We are saying the corona vaccine should be open source. And not only today corona vaccine, in future, all vaccines should be open source. It will be common global good. Nobody should own. It should not be owned by a company. It should not be owned by a country. It should be owned by all the people of this planet so that they can share it, produce it, and distribute it as they wish. And this is what is needed. So we have to raise our voice right now. This is another very important issue because uh, we need 8 billion uh, uh, vaccines as soon as it's developed so that everybody has access to it and there should not be any barrier whatsoever whether it's a production barrier whether it's a distribution barrier whether it's a pricing barrier now all the barriers are up uh, like the old days uh, so we want to finish those walls we don't want to have any of those walls standing we want to make sure there is no wall there is no patent right to vaccine for corona and this is one decision that we have to take. We urge uh, Brazilians and other countries uh, to raise their voice. This is an important point. And government of Brazil and government of other countries saying that no, we will not allow anybody to own it. It's a, it's a common good and it could be produced, it could be distributed by any company anywhere. And there we are raising that issue that uh, ideally uh, the, the social business uh, pharmaceutical companies should be created, will be producing these, they will be distributing these, not for making money, but to make sure it reaches every single person in this planet. This is very important to make sure every single person on this planet is reached with this vaccine. If we fail, if it's delayed, then another danger comes. Danger of fake 
vaccine. If, if I'm desperate to get to the vaccine, if I don't get it, some smart guy to make money will give me fake vaccines, promising that this is as good as anything else, or this is the genuine one. And out of my appetite, out of my hunger for this medicine, I'll go for it and I'll pay for it and I get the fake one and create all the more problem for myself, giving me the false feeling that I'm sick, but I'm not sick. So to protect ourselves uh, in the medical sense uh, to, from the coronavirus, at the same time, protect myself from those uh, drugs, the fake drugs in the name of coronavirus that will come everywhere in the world. We have to make sure it is open source it is allowed to be produced anywhere, ideally produced by social business pharmaceutical companies in Brazil, in Bangladesh, as many social businesses as we can create. Once we know the recipe, we know how to do that, we'll do it. And uh, WHO can play the regulator to make sure, certify that uh, ours is right and that we can distribute it as we uh, plan to make sure that everybody gets it. So this is another one that uh, we have to make that. Uh, the third point that uh, I would like to bring up is when the corona uh, is going on, uh, a, a kind of a debate, uh, I would say an artificial debate has been created, uh, the life versus livelihood debate. And I looked at it, I don't understand why, how does this uh, uh, debate come about at all? Why, how can we question the life itself? If, if there's no life, we don't exist, I don't exist, you don't exist. So what is the debate about? There is no kind of trading off with life. Life is something, either you have it or you don't. It cannot be traded for something else. So primacy of life has to be recognized. It should not be uh, compared, it should not be weighed in importance with something else. It is the super important uh, item on the uh, life of a human being. That itself and not only human being all all, all uh, life form this is the essence of being us here on this planet so i would say so when you say life versus or life and livelihood uh, there is no uh, kind of alternative either or alternative life is said to be recognized this is a supreme it cannot be terminated it cannot be compromised by anything thing so if you open livelihood what happens the whole idea of spreading up uh, coronavirus is doomed because now you are letting corona run any direction as you want because you don't have any barrier. Why? Because you want to start your economy. Why do you want to start your economy? Because in the name of letting people earn uh, their livelihood, actually you want to uh, create your, uh, run your uh, economy to make profit. It's a profit versus life. It's not a livelihood versus life. It's a, it's, a, it's a hidden agenda, it's a profit versus life. So th this doesn't make sense. Why should life, profit should be a kind of item uh, who, to challenge the life itself? So this is something that we have to look. And when you have a livelihood issue, uh, livelihood has many, many characters, many, many options. So it's not just uh, hitting life and then uh, exchange it with the livelihood. This is not exchangeable. How many lives you would like to exchange per life sacrificed? Is it something making sense? It doesn't make sense. You cannot sacrifice life to save life uh, in a cool-headed way uh, by opening up the door where you can spread the uh, 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 coronavirus as you wish. Because opening the market, opening the economy means you are allowing coronavirus to any direction and kill people. So that is not acceptable. Uh, I don't want anybody has to have a license over my life to kill me. I, I, that's not the society. This is, this is not the society that we think about that somebody uh, gave the license that now you can go and kill anybody you want because you can spread your disease any direction you want. If, if the livelihood in a pure sense, you are trying to protect the people who are losing income, there are many options. Options such as uh, giving food for them, free food, subsidized food, or ration card food, or sending money to their addresses so that they can buy themselves food. Oh, no, many, many options. 
and this is also this is said all suddenly became a very important issue some governments are saying no we have time we have to open it up we cannot open up and kill people and who keeps it gives any government the license to kill people that's not a government who decides to kill people deliberately so that's uh, one issue that i want to share i want to make sure the primacy of life is recognized but at the same time people who are in danger we protect them uh, it's not for the sake of uh, uh, open the door for profit for the profit seekers just for the sake of letting people survive and we argue for that all the time uh, in a very strong voice when it comes to artificial intelligence and when I tell people that artificial intelligence will take away jobs from many people, massive number of people will be out of jobs, billions of people will be out of jobs, and uh, that's artificial intelligence, and it should not be allowed to do so. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous thing to let artificial intelligence go in that direction. All the enthusiasts of artificial intelligence always come in a chorus to tell me, that, no, no, you misunderstand, that's not what is done, uh, people will be very happy in a situation like that, getting away from job, drudgery of the job, suddenly job became a drudgery, so they are saving human beings. How will we save these saved human beings will survive? They have a very pure uh, formula for that. Give them universal basic income. See, they solve the problem of unemployment. Income is there, you can see. So this is very satisfactory because uh, artificial intelligence means massive amount of profit for them. So the, when the profit is there, they have solutions any, any, right away. But when it comes to the situation of coronavirus, suddenly they see pushing them back into the uh, roadside or the, in the marketplace is the only solution. They don't talk about universal basic income now. Why not? The same solution. You talk, this is the real solution, universal basic income. Give them the universal basic income during the um, corona period. That's it. So this is a, something a uh, very uh, a partisan kind of argument, a very dangerous kind of argument, expose people to um, possibility of sacrificing life uh, uh, to uh, bring food for them. That's, uh, that's not the right direction. Uh, and then I come to the area that uh, I'm very focused on right now and I want to share with you. Uh, the question comes, how do we get back to uh, the quote unquote normal world uh, out after the coronavirus? Uh, some call it a new normal, that uh, after corona we'll have a new normal. But I said this is not about new normal, it's not about uh, getting back to the world because uh, the many preparations are already afoot to make sure uh, we go back to the same situation that we were in before the corona started. I said that we shouldn't do that. Uh, the world before corona was a dangerous world to begin with. We were complaining and that's where the um, Amazonia story burning and we said this is going to ruin us. This is the, uh, uh, the Amazonia is the lungs of the whole world. We, we cannot destroy our lungs uh, deliberately to make money. Uh, and that's what the world was doing. So this uh, kind of symbolized how stupid we can get when it comes to making profit. We can destroy anything, we destroy the whole world for the sake of making large profit. Uh, we said, no, we cannot do that. But they were merrily doing it when uh, coronavirus came. Not only uh, uh, the burning of the forest, also the fossil fuel was going on. They were talking about uh, giving us the time the people were concerned about the global warming, uh, saying that very little time left uh, before the world becomes totally uninhabitable, uninhabitable uh, for human beings on this planet. So we came very close of disaster point. We are just about to jump from the cliff and finish it off. Uh, luckily, coronavirus stopped us from that jump. So if the virus ends, coronavirus ends somehow, are we going back to that level to finish the jump? Is this the solution we are proposing? Because that is waiting. 
global warming is terrible and it's just one more jump to go and we're done finish. And then of course, the other things which are uh, pushing us to the finishing line, uh, the extreme uh, wealth concentration, which I've been pushing uh, to the attention very repeatedly, very strongly, wherever I can, that the whole world is a very strange world because all the wealth of the world is in the hands of few people and it's becoming uh, more and more concentrated wealth for the same people and less and less wealth left for the rest of the population. 99% of the wealth uh, population uh, don't have even 1% of the wealth of the world. What kind of wealth, what kind of uh, economy that we have built? This is a uh, kind of a, uh, unacceptable situation. I say, I keep saying it's a ticking time bomb. If you go, if you continue on that, uh, the, the social time bomb exploding. Uh, we will kill ourselves, we'll destroy ourselves by doing that. So going back means we go back to the wealth concentration, we go, go back to the global warming, and then we go back to the artificial intelligence. Uh, I've been uh, again drawing attention that artificial intelligence is going to destroy us because human being will be uh, pushed away from all the positions of work and everything. So that is not the world that we can make it sustainable for human being. It's just making all the people in the planet as beggars to be surviving on uh, uh, government subsidy for all time to come in their lifetime. It's not something that the uh, world is uh, created for us. The world is a much better place, much better place uh, for creative activities for human being rather than sit there and do nothing. So all these things will come back. So going back to that world is simply equal to committing suicide. Are we going to commit suicide? That's the question we have to ask and answer. And the, my answer is very clear. No, no, no. We are not going to go back and commit our suicide, finish our suicide. We don't want to finish with suicide. We rather take this as a wonderful opportunity, wonderful opportunity to skip the whole jump into disaster and create absolutely new world. And we can do that. We have many ways to do that. Uh, simple things that when we start the uh, economy, we have to start an engine. We don't want to start the old engine. We want to build a new engine and start the engine with that direction of reaching to the new world with the new path. That's what we have to do. We know how to do that. We know we'll be creating a world where we social businesses will be playing a very important role. We'll be redesigning the entire concept of uh, business. So instead of having maximization of personal profit, we will be creating a parallel business, zero personal profit. So maximum profit, profit personal profit versus uh, zero personal profit, which we call social business. We'll be creating social business lots of social businesses to solve people's problem. We know how to do that. That's why Amazonia thing can, we can create an example of it, uh, create an area of Amazonia as a social business Amazonia. We will forget what is happening outside of it, but here we all share, we all care, make sure people who live there, they live happily, they will have education, healthcare, better life for their children. At the same time, we protect the environment of this area and make sure they contribute to the uh, lessening of the uh, global warming, reducing global warming, then adding to global warming. So that's one direction. Then it become an example we explain to everybody else. Today we can take it globally because we have to go back and start it anew. So we stopped all the fossil fuel to go with us. We don't take the fossil fuel into the new world. We don't take the plastic in the new world. We don't take the uh, destruction of forests with us in the new world. So anything which destroys forests stops here. It doesn't cross the boundary. So we'll have lots of checkpoints built up right now before we start the process of going to the new world. Old world, anything with the old world has to be verified, checked, and stamped that this is safe, you can take with us. Or this is terribly unsafe. It has no way it can go. So we have a strong border that it, it, cross, it cannot cross into the new area of uh, 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 new life, 
world that we want to create. So in that world, it will be a world that we want to make sure there will be uh, no um, wealth concentration to begin with. So we want, what are the things which is making wealth concentration possible? We know that. So we stop them here. They cannot go into the new world. So our checkpoints that we create everywhere will stop them, that we cannot cross that boundary and go to the new world. So new world will be very careful. It, it will be a slow process because when you move into a new situation, you, you don't want to do it in a kind of wave and create all the confusion into it. We have to be very careful, no confusion. We know very clearly, very smartly. And our governments have to be very careful. And citizens have to play a very strong role. Uh, the governments cannot uh, do everything to change every, the whole world uh, to move into a new situation. So us, you, me, will be the responsible uh, instruments for making that happen. So we have to make up your mind, make up our, our mind, your mind, my mind. If our minds are made that we don't want to go back, we don't want to commit that suicide. We don't want to make that uh, jump from the cliff to finish the whole disaster. We would rather come back here. And now we take a different journey, a different road to create a beautiful world, world where there'll be no global warming, zero net carbon emission. So we, the new world that we will make sure right from day one, we are heading for zero net carbon emission and we'll be heading for zero wealth concentration. We'll be heading for uh, no zero unemployment. So that's the kind of world we want to go. This is the time to design. And in that design, we have to transform the entire financial system. And financial is the financial system is the root cause of all these problems. So we have to have a massive amount of social businesses created in um, financial sector. And that's where YSB can play a very important role because you're already in the process. You know how to design those uh, social business, how to design those social business investment funds, how to make social business venture capital fund, because we'll be needing lots of venture capital funds. And we will be telling the governments, when you give bailout packages to a company to revive itself, first is to pass the test whether it is a, a safe company to take with us, meaning that it's not making the world uh, go into disaster path. So once we make sure that this is a company you want to take, then who should get the money? The company owners, existing company owners should get the money, uh, the bailout package. I would say, why do you give it? Give it to social business investment fund. Let investment fund decide how much money they would like to invest in that particular company that we want to save, and then revive it, uh, take it in a way. So now the new company will be formed with the new partnership. Uh, the shares will be owned partly by social business company. Uh, uh, which will be you now a joint venture with social business with the regular company owner. So companies are company goes back to work, but with a new partner now, social business partner. So that any profit that will come from this uh, company, profit making company, that profit will be used in social businesses because social business uh, partners will put this money into the social business fund to create more social businesses. So we become partners with the banks, with the existing insurance companies, with existing other financial companies, uh, wherever the finance is needed, wherever the government is uh, facilitating the fund. Always, they will pass it through the social business venture capital funds, social business investment funds, social business uh, uh, venture funds, whatever name, uh, whatever design you have, but this social business. So governments should not go directly save the profit makers. There's no reason why we should do that. It should be passing through the uh, social businesses, uh, funds and things which can be created right now. This is the time to do that. So we have to decide right now to make sure that we create a world with a uh, uh, completely new vision. And we know how to do that. And we invite others to contribute to those ideas. We are not the only ones to contribute so that we know our purpose. We know our direction and make that happen. Young people already demonstrating that the old world is not the world that they are going to survive. We'll invite them to join this new world, creation of the new world. They will come with all the creative power to make sure we don't go to the old world and destroy ourselves. We don't want to go back and commit suicide. So we want to make the world a happy world, make the new world a super happy world.
and with shares, with sharing all the uh, uh, wealth of the world together and make it a, a world which is uh, free from all the pollutions, all the plastics, and all the global warming, a safe world, a happy world. So that's what uh, we should be working on right now. This is a very important agenda. We should not uh, take it lightly. And individuals are the responsible person, you and me and your, our friends. Together, we can make it. And no use blaming the government because uh, government has no clue yet, but uh, they are trying to pretend they are all follow the old blueprints. All blueprints are not acceptable because all blueprints will just lead us to the world world. We need new blueprints and persuade those governments because this is the new blueprint. This is how we can save the world, save our country, save our nation, and have a new world, which will not be like the nightmare of the past. So this is, uh, this is the point that I want to share with you, and I'll let you uh, discuss and uh, raise questions for a few minutes that we have, and we'll move on. Uh, Thank you continue very much. With discussion and actions and so on. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that, Professor Yun. was really, really inspiring. To be honest, you already answered one of my questions, so I'm going to okay. skip this question because, you know, living in populous countries as Brazil, Bangladesh, this apparent dichotomy between the economic crisis and the sanitary crisis, you, you answered that perfectly. So okay. it, it makes you. no sense to uh, uh, kill people to avoid killing people. So it's like yeah. a set. Uh, way to think. I would like to touch one point here that you mentioned the financial system. We cannot, we cannot give license to kill people. Right. Opening no, no. Even license. Yeah. That's perfect. No government should have this license, right? Absolutely. No problem. That's perfect. So you were mentioning the financial system, and as you know, as an economist, a brilliant economist that you are, that financial system is made of crisis. So we have a history of crisis, and there is a very interesting chronology here. New York Stock Exchange was founded in 1817. 100 years have passed, and then the New York Stock Exchange crash came in 1929. And people right. understood that they were considering returns only. They were just seeking for return, and no other dimension was being considered. Then they learned that the risk should be considered. And now we spent another almost 100 years to found out that another very important aspect of the decisions on investments were missing, which is the impact. It's not just the risk and return, but also the impact that your decisions on when it comes to investment are causing to the environment and to, into the society. How do you view this apparent simple matrix that we are operating with and it's not responding for the challenges of our times? Well, all the points that you made all uh, related to still the profit making. They're always trying to see how the profit is protected. At the same time, do something good. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, as long as one common thing in the new world that I'm proposing, that everything we do in the financial sector has to be tested on one ground. Are this social consciousness tested? Do they have social consciousness into that? Meaning, is your action uh, harmful to people in any way? Are we uh, contributing to global warming by any of my decisions? Are we adding any problem in wealth concentration in my decision? Are we contributing anything in uh, unemployment creation in my decision? These are basic decisions you have to make, whatever financial institutions you are building. It's not just I made this impact. And what I have not done also be included, that I have not done this, I have not done this deliberately, I don't want to do this. So that testing has to be both ways. I do this and I don't do this. And most often not doing is more important than doing. So that has to be taken care of at the same time. So I, I invite them, I, uh, profit making for me uh, is acceptable. Provided at the same time, we allow a new stream, which is not profit making, zero profit, profit personal profit making. It's a sustainable, it covers the cost, but it is cost driven, only exclusively cost driven. It is a problem solving company. It's not a money making company. This is the distinction that we have to make. One is a money making company, another is problem solving company without losing money. 
and the, there is no personal profit, zero personal profit. It's a maximum personal profit on one side, zero personal profit on the other side. All the things that you can bring, maybe in between, between the prof maximization of personal profit or zero personal profit. So all the other in variations, all the other intermediate organization is fine, provided they make sure they go through this uh, checking point, they don't do harm. If is it a fossil fuel, if you're not taking, taking uh, profit, still, I will not let you go. This is, this is something that uh, is not acceptable. We don't want any fossil fuel. We don't want any plastic. So those, if you, if you want to make those things, which is harmful to people, that's an, or even less harmful, but we want to make it no harmful. Those, this is the direction that we have to give. But focusing that everybody redesign those sort of, uh, the financial. My emphasis on the redesigning of sort of, uh, financial institutions to, so that it become uh, uh, a social business uh, financial system. Uh, we remember, I made sure, I pointed out that the financial institutions are the root cause of wealth concentration. So you have to be very careful. You say that I do this, I do this. Are you contributing to wealth concentration? If you are contributing to wealth concentration, through your action, wealth is going one direction and then it's not having the other direction, then you're not allowed to stay because you are contributing, you are making negative contribution to, uh, to bring harm to people. So this is what I will just uh, put uh, notice on that this is what we have to be very careful in designing financial and so we have to design the financial institution is completely different way uh, so that everybody in the world has access to financial resources so that people can design their own life they wish and they become entrepreneurs by themselves they don't have to be a job seeker because they don't have money so they have to work for somebody else that is the uh, the slavery created by the financial system. Yeah, that's that's very inspiring also, Professor Jonas. And I just invite the audience if they want to know a very little example, a very beginning example of a social business financial vehicle, please contact Yonos Social Business. We are more than glad to, to, to show how examples can happen. Before handing over to my colleague Tulio, I just would like to mention that we have more than 700 people live on Bangladesh uh, media, social media uh, channels. And we have more than 2,000 people here in Brazil, so almost 3,000 people in this arch of social business friends between uh, Brazil and Bangladesh. So thank you very much, You're Professor welcome. Yunus. I hand thank over you. to you just for this, his, his couple of questions. Thank you very thank much, you. Professor. Thank you very much, go ahead. Professor Yunus, it's such a pleasure Hi. to meet you and talk thank to you, you again, even virtually. <laughs> I'm glad to see that you're healthy and well, and most of all, no, to see that you, Thank you. <laughs> and to see that you continue to use your voice to inspire all of us to act, to change the world, to create a fair and super happy society mm -hmm. to everyone. Thank you again for having this time and to being here with your Brazilian family. So to continue our round of questions and add it to Lucianus, I would like to hear your opinion about the following. In the context of COVID-19 crisis, many big corporations are acting to support solutions and fight back a lot of problems that have risen. Many of them are also innovating in the way of how they do businesses, focusing on this emergency support. And for many of these companies, it is the first time that they are acting in this way. How do you see this crisis as an opportunity for this big corporation to strategically engage in solving the more pressing needs of our society? Oh, they have a tremendous role to play. I'm, uh, I see uh, big companies, corporates, uh, very dedicated to do something uh, meaningful for the world. Uh, although uh, the business they run uh, is not conforming to the ideals and the hopes that they had in their mind because the system is designed the way uh, they cannot change. So they are trying to find the escape route and we offered them the escape route and they feel very happy. So we become good friends with many corporates and that's how the Danone story came. That's how uh, all the Uniqlo story came. That's why McCain stories came. These are examples of large corporate bodies but very, very willing to open up 
to make sure they can do something. Since they cannot do their uh, work within the existing framework accepted by the norms of the society, norms of the economics and so on. So they have taken a side way, shared with us, joined with us, create a parallel economy, creating social business uh, subsidiary for them, created social business fund for people. Uh, and fund is pretty big funds, like 100 million euro funds. Uh, this is a subs huge fund, uh, but a corporate has done that uh, by actively participating in that. That's a Danone uh, Communities Fund. This is a, an amazing example. A created action tank, corporates getting together uh, to the purpose, how to solve the people's problem and how do we contribute, how do we participate? And we give them the option, to, why don't you create social businesses? And we're working together and luckily, uh, Brazilian companies are also uh, creating uh, action already in the action tank. And uh, we have uh, action tank example begin in France. So we this is a good chance because when everything collapses, uh, your arguments now become bolder, that you have to do very bold things right now. The usual thing will not solve the problem of uh, getting away from the old world, getting away from the suicidal path. If you want to, to avoid the destruction of the planet, you have to find a new way. And this is the time to do it fast. And I'm very happy that the uh, uh, corporates are thinking about that. If, if, if in, within a corporate body, not everybody is thinking of that, but if it's a number of them are thinking about that, it's a good start. And those numbers are meaningful. They can take steps like creating a social business fund, like they have corporate social responsibility fund, CSR fund. All they have to do, rename it, call it social business fund. And instead of just charity given by the CSR, they invest in social business. So it's a company approved already in the name of uh, uh, CSR. Now we are transforming it into social business. Now you can create a number of things, how to help poor people get out of the trouble of coronavirus. If you spend half an hour, you'll have wonderful idea coming out of it. Will you have the fund ready fund? With the CSR fund and go and CSR fund transformed into social business fund will grow. CSR fund doesn't grow. The CSR fund disappear, but the social business fund will always grow. It will come back to them because it's a business you are investing and your investment money will come back. So you create that and then it grows. The companies grow. Social businesses grow. So these are the opportunities you have. So you have to do and collectively you can put together uh, some of your money to create social business fund, common fund, so that you can help young people, unemployed young people to become entrepreneurs. It's a fund which makes all the difference. That a child in Brazil, uh, young people in Brazil cannot become entrepreneur because no financial institution will give him a penny. Will not even allow him to come and enter the uh, office of the bank or office of the financing institution. So they're so distanced away. So now we say, we are for you. We are created for you. you. There's the money available. You come with the idea and start your business and see how many of them will start their businesses and become entrepreneurs. Who wants to wait for a job, languishing, not knowing what's happening in their fate, in their life, and particularly when Corona has destroyed everything, chances of getting a job will become smaller and smaller, uh, even when you restart. Uh, you go start going new direction. So this is the way you create uh, funds for uh, investing in uh, new entrepreneurs, people who are for, for the young people for the first time starting life with an entrepreneurship. So varieties of things and the corporates can help, very extremely helpful. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for your answer. Super inspired. We have been uh... Uh, following your inspiration and trying to bring companies to this fight also, knowing that yeah. governments, NGOs, and social business by themselves cannot fight this, uh, this fight alone. So uh, it's, it's really inspiring to see how uh, this crisis also come, can, comes out as opportunity to bring all them together uh, and uh, in cooperation to create this new world that we want. Uh, Professor Yunus, uh, I'm following to the, the last question that we have here. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to uh, answer questions from the public since we don't have enough time, but we will uh, take attention to them and respond to them. 
So for our last question, we have been asking them uh, the same question for all the panelists that have been with us last week. And what we want to hear from you is what advice uh, you, Professor Yunus, would give to the young Yunus, young Mohammed Yunus, to fight this crisis in a different way. What uh, the young Yunus would uh, want to hear from you? Well, I would say this is your chance. If you miss it, you'll never get it back again. Uh, if you miss it, your life is is a real danger. Uh, we are we belong to the older generation. We will somehow squeeze through, but you cannot squeeze through. You have to suffer through it and end with the disaster. And your children and your grandchildren has no chance in this life. So this is your last chance of survival, not only survival, with glory, with happiness, that the other generations couldn't do it, you did it. Your generation has done that. And you have enormous power to make it happen. You are the most powerful generation in human history because you have all the technology in your hand. You have all the knowledge in your disposal at your disposal. So use that and you can make the difference by, by just committing yourself to say, no going back. And we are going to build the completely new framework, new ideas. And if you make the decision, it will happen. And you have to imagine that world right from today, right from to this moment, you imagine that world that I'm talking about. It will be your world, what kind of world you want. You are the designer, and implementer of that world. It's up to in your hands, in your right now, in your palm. You can do that. And you imagine it. If you imagine it and stick to it, it will happen. I can guarantee you that it will happen if you only imagine it. And make sure you believe in it and you continue to pursue that point. And this is the right occasion. If you miss this point, it will not come back in our lifetime again. Perfect. Thank you. I absolutely love the idea of social fiction that you thought us yeah. like create the, the, the world, the imagine the and create the world that we we want in our minds and start to act now towards this dream, this social fiction. Professor Yunus was such a pleasure, such an honor again to have you here. Uh, we are. It's a very inspiring way to start the week and mostly to gain forces to continue to work towards a uh, word that we believe. I want to welcome back here uh, Luciano to end this session with me. And also thank you uh, from our side, from the US, UNO Social Business Family to UNO Center and LAMIA and all the Bangladesh friends that uh, have uh, worked with us to put this together. Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, from my side, Professor Yunus, for being with thank us, you. for taking the time, for taking the chance to speak with us. Brazilian, uh, counterparts and stakeholders are very we're very eager to hear from you so it was a very fruitful session uh, thank you so much and appreciate again our friends from Unicentry, our family from you know, social business in germany and across the globe our friends in india in uganda in kenya and colombia they are all super close to us so very happy to have them all and please get in touch with us get in touch with the universe of social business this as professor you know says this is a path to the future. Future. So thank you again, Professor Yunus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yunus. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.